Hey guys, Killer B. Uh, getting a lot of questions, man, about how I uh, run my kayak and what setup I use. So that's what we're going to do here in a minute. We're going to go completely through the setup that I use to offshore fish. Uh, it changes all the time because I watch YouTube like everyone else. So for now, this is the setup I'm using. Uh, had a lot of questions, like guys asking, wanting to know exactly what I use, what I don't use, how I use it. So I'm going to go through that today. All right, to start off with, uh, I'm just going to pan the camera around so we can see what we're doing here. And we'll start from front to back. So we'll go to the front of this thing and then we'll go all the way to the back. Like I said, I'm going to give you a view of it. I've got it set up exactly like I would if I was going offshore to fish the rigs or whatever. Uh, got everything on board that I'd need. Uh, starting at the front, we've got a fish bag. It clips to the front right there. You can see. And then I use a deal that straps it to right there. I run my Mirage Drive. Uh, I've got it leashed right there. So it, in case it does come out of the boat. Then I clip it right here on this little tab. It keeps it under and keeps it secure while I'm going through the surf and making a surf entry. My gaff right here. Uh, if you want to learn how to make these gaffs and these rig hooks that I use... Professor Salt. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to that guy. He is legit. Knows his stuff. Uh, it's exactly what I designed my rig hook and my uh, um, gaff after was his video. So if you can go check out his video, it's Professor Salt or Glenn Madden. It'll be on YouTube. But anyway, there's my gaff. You see where I hook it right there? My rig hook. I run a uh, my flag off my rig hook it just makes it easier you can see it right there my clip and everything where I cook to the rig so we're gonna go front to back this side here you can see I've got the paddle leashed I always leash mine on this side because I'm right-handed and I usually jump in the kayak from that side of the uh, kayak so that's how I usually get on board uh, like I said you can see my, uh, I've got a leash right here. You don't leash it, you lose it, pretty much. We'll go into some stuff that I don't leash, and you run the risk of losing it to the surf or while you're out there to the fish or whatever. But uh, as far as my paddle, that's pretty important, so I keep it leashed right here. <clears throat> my seat, right behind my seat, whatever cooler you decide to run. Okay, we're going to head right into the... Uh, the kayak crate you can see my crate there's a bunch of different ones that you can buy um, online Hobie crates there's all different kinds I set this one up for me because it works for me uh, I'll go through it all in just a minute but I want to show you the rod holders another youtuber gave me a great idea on this and uh, his stuff is legit as well and works I used to run my rods straight up like this right here well the problem is if you get rolled in the surf at any point and your rods are sticking up like this they're pretty tall you can see I run seven foot rods to get around the front of the kayak so if you roll you're gonna run the risk of snapping your rods off breaking eyes on your rods everything else so this guy, Yak Motley, I don't know if he came up with it, but he made a YouTube video about it that I watched. Runs his at like a 45. So basically, there's your rods. I've had a lot of questions because people can't see my rods. I keep my, my uh, bait casters over here, my spinning reels over here on this side. So I always know what side they're on if I need to grab them. Right here, I've got spare storage for other stuff. I keep my uh, pump deal right here. I don't run, uh, I don't know how other guys do it. I don't run anything in the hatches because these things are so hard to get in out there. The only thing I might do different right here, if you see this middle hatch, I'll run a sponge 
So I use that thing to get most of the water out if it takes on water. And uh, you can use a sponge to like stick over your head if it's hot like today. You can stick water on your back and get it out of the kayak, you know, sponge it up. But also right here, this is where I uh, run my trash. So like any water bottles that I need to get rid of or whatever, I throw in there when I'm done with them. I keep my fillet knife. I don't know how many of these I've lost at this point not leashing them. So I bought a cheap one and the one that, that I've kept in here the longest has been the cheapest, this one, because I leashed it. So I run it right there where I can get to it. I also, on this side, you can see leashed right here. Or in a pair of dikes. You never know when you're gonna get a hook in you or whatever, you have to cut some, uh, some uh, steel leader you know, on the sharks or whatever, you got a pair of dikes right here. So I run those just kind of in there like that. And they stay in pretty good. All right, guys. Next thing we're going to talk about is my kayak crate. Mine was one that I uh, actually made myself. Uh, went through a couple of, of things on this one. When I first made it, it was a single crate, and it was way too short. So um, anything you had in the bottom would get wet regardless of what you did. So what I did, I don't know if you can see it on this. This is actually three crates. So there's a bottom crate there. You can see right there where I've zip tied it together and cut it where it sets up proud of the bottom of this kayak. Because when you're offshore, this kayak right here is gonna take on water. You know what I mean? You're gonna get water in the bottom of it. That's just the way it is. So it sets up a little proud and once we get inside of here, I'll show you another thing that I've done to make sure that it that it stays Everything stays pretty dry from this point on uh, The way that I have mine secured is bungees right here to these points. You can see them right there And it keeps it in there pretty good. I mean that thing I've rolled over everything else You can see it's not going anywhere So let's get inside here the top deal here, I've got this. It comes in handy when I'm out there because I can throw stuff in the top of it as I'm using it. So if I'm using a certain box, a box of jigs, box of, of spoons, whatever, I can get to it really easy. This part here, I keep my rig bag. It's got all my different riggings in it. And if you don't keep this dry, it's a real pain because I'll unzip it for you real quick. Also keep a compass and a line cutter right there if I need it. Okay, we'll get right here so you can see. This is my rig bag. I keep my kingfish rigs. Uh, my balloons all my shark stuff right here where I can get it real quick You don't want to overcrowd these things because they're a real pain once you get out there To get in and get it all untangled. So you just keep single rigs in there. Replace them every trip when you need them I keep some uh, a Fluorocarbon leader in here uh, You need it for Spanish mackerel pretty much everything has teeth out there. So Need some fluorocarbon leader or whatnot. You get in here a little further. And my rod holder for when I'm shark fishing. Uh, it goes on the rail up there. I use these waterproof boxes. They do pretty good. Keep some lures in there. Keep my batteries for my GoPro. All these are those plain old waterproof boxes. Jig heads. All my uh, Spanish mackerel stuff. You can see jigs, whatnot, gotcha lures, gotcha plugs. You have to get organized out there because it's really hard to turn around and get into these boxes constantly. So you gotta know which one, what you got in each box. Uh, here, I keep it all mixed up. It's just a, a bunch of terminal tackle, um, hooks, Keep swivels in here, sproll stuff, line clips, 
all my terminal tackle, I keep it here so I can find it. And then, if you can see right here, I keep a cutting board. Right behind my cutting board, I keep my big lures, all my big stuff. Where I can, now it's kind of a pain to get it out, but this is the best way that I've found because you get those big boxes and they're really not waterproof. So you can get all your, your, your larger lures out right here when you need them and just hang them on without hooking yourself here onto the side here. Keep them out of the way. There you go. So I kind of hang my stuff up out of the way right there. If you can see right here, I've got a false floor in here as well that I built. Like I said, this thing didn't set up high enough. So I just put a little false floor with some pool noodles in there. So this thing sets a good, you know, all the way to this line. So none of your stuff sitting and soaking it's going to get soaked in the water, you know, where water's setting above the water line there and soaking it. So it works out pretty good. Well, there you go, guys. That's the setup. That's pretty much it. That's the way I run my kayak. Uh, takes a few minutes to get it all together. It's not super heavy. Um, easy, to, easy to keep your stuff organized this way. And that's the main thing. If I can stress one thing in kayak fishing is you have to be organized. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Uh, if you did, comment below. Get in touch with me. If you have any questions at all, email me or whatever. Uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Hopefully this will help some people out.